Hi everybody, this is Bogus Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the brand new NECA Ultimate Nosferatu figure. So before we take a look at Nosferatu, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, he comes with a set of open hands. Up next, he comes with his paper. This is actually detailed really nicely. I love how it looks like it's worn on the edges. That looks really good. You can see it's also detailed on the back. He doesn't actually have a hand to hold this, though. I wish he came with an open hand that could grip this, just a thumb being just a little bit closer so it could slide in like that. But yeah, it just falls right out of his hand. Up next, he comes with this alternate right hand for holding the bottle and the bottle. It's done very nicely, and the grip is very tight on this, so it's definitely not going to fall out. Up next, he comes with an alternate right hand for holding the inkwell and the inkwell itself. And it looks really nice. It's got some nice paint detail to it, and if you look at the top, you can actually see they painted some ink on right there where the quill goes down in. And you can actually put the quill down in it. I thought that was a very nice touch. You just stick it in like that, and it stays very securely. It's very thin on the end though, so I would be careful of that, but I do think it's very, very awesome that you can actually put the quill down in the ink well. Up next, he comes with the alternate right hand for holding the quill, and it's cast in black and has some nice gray paint over top of it. And I like the way he holds it. He actually holds it properly, and I think that looks really good. And for it being such a thin accessory, he holds it very well in his hand. It is a very tight grip, so he won't lose that either. I'm always worried with some accessories that they'll slip out of the figure's hand unless they have a tight grip. But this actually has a tight grip, and he can hold it very well. Up next, he comes with an alternate left hand for holding the keys and the keys. And they all look very nice. They're attached by this little chain here. And he can't really grip this that tight. It's kind of a flimsy grip on it. Because let me take this out. That's all the bigger the hole is that you put the key down in. So yeah, I do wish he could have gripped this just a little bit tighter. I do think that it should have been open on the bottom. That way you could slide the key up through it. So yeah, I definitely probably won't be leaving this in his hand. Because this is very thin and does want to fall out. Up next, he comes with a set of really long clawed hands, and these are definitely the hands that I'm going to be leaving on the figure because they look very, very awesome. Up next, he comes with an alternate smiling head sculpt. It doesn't look too bad, but it's not the head that I'd prefer to leave on this figure. Uh, anytime I see smiling Nosferatu, I always think of the Spongebob episode. <laughs> Up next, he comes with this more serious head sculpt, and I really love this head sculpt. I think it looks very nice, but the only drawback is his ears are flat to his head, and that's because it's meant to put this hat on, and this hat is a very squishy rubber type material, and it just goes on his head very easily, and it stays on there pretty securely, so that's why the ears are like that, so they'll be tucked underneath the hat, but I do wish they would have given us a head sculpt like this with the ears out, because I think this is probably my favorite head sculpt. It does kind of look funny, though, if you try to leave it on him without the hat, though, because of the way the ears are laid back to the head. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the main head sculpt that he comes with. So taking a look at the head sculpt, I think NECA did an incredible job at capturing the likeness of Max Shrek. I think this head sculpt looks very nice. The teeth are sculpted very nicely. I believe it's because that's a separate piece that's attached underneath the head sculpt. You get some very nice shading under his eyes, some nice purple shading. His eyes have a touch of pink to them, or maybe like a reddish hue. It looks really good. The hair there by the ears and the eyebrows have some nice gray paint over top of them because they're done in black. This head sculpt just looks very nice, and all of the print tech that they used to print the uh, painted details onto his face look really good. Like right here around the cheeks, you get some shading. That looks very nice. I think NECA did a very, very nice job on this head sculpt. You don't see much of his undershirt, but it is sculpted nicely. You can see it has some nice wrinkles sculpted on. And his coat here has some really incredible sculpt detail to it. It has some really awesome texturing to it. I didn't realize from the promo pictures that it had that. But it has some really cool texturing to it. You can see it also has a bit of black dry brushing to it in spots. Like here around the wrinkles by the chest here. And on the arms. Yeah, that's some really nice paint detail. Maybe it's a dark brown. Yeah, I actually think it's a dark brown. Like right here, it's a dark brown. But yeah, the paint variation over top of this looks incredible. And surprisingly, it doesn't limit the articulation like I thought it would. The coat also lays very well on the figure on the left side. It hides that articulation there very nicely. But on the right side, you can see some gappage. You have to have his arm up like that, and then you get some gappage underneath here. So I'm not sure if it's like that on all of them. I tried pushing it over just a little bit. 
and you still get just a little bit of gappage. It still lays right just right here, but yeah, you still get some gappage right there, so that's a little odd. He even has some amazing sculpt detail to his hands. You can see the inside of his hands have some purple paint on top of them. They sculpted all the lines on his palm really nice, and it looks like it has a little bit of a black wash to bring the details out nicely. And then looking at the back here, you can see they even sculpted the veins on the back of his hands. So yeah, that is incredibly detailed. Just like with his coat, his pants have some really good sculpt detail to them with some really cool texturing that was really hard to see in the promo pictures. Uh, the promo pictures really don't do this figure justice as to how well it's sculpted. You get some really cool texturing, and then you get some good sculpt detail to his boots. And you get some gray paint over top of them, bringing the details out very nicely. So now, let's go over his articulation. He has a ball jointed head and neck that can actually look up just about all the way. He can look down all the way. He can move his head side to side and all the way around. He has shoulders that can move all the way out. Single jointed elbows that can bend in that far. Swiveled wrists that can move side to side and up and down. I want to say it's a ball jointed diaphragm here that can move back all the way. He can actually crunch forward a nice bit. I was really surprised that he could crunch forward at all with this jacket. But yeah, you can see that he can actually crunch forward right here. He can also move side to side. He has hips that can only move out that far because this is cast in one piece. You can't move them out any farther than that. He can kick forward very slightly. He can kick back a lot more because there is a cut in the back here. He has a swivel at the thigh that's very nice. He has single jointed knees that can bend back all the way. Swivel up here in the shin that can move side to side. Ankles that can move down just a little bit, up just a little bit, and nice ankle rocker. So now, let's do some size comparisons. So first up here, Nosferatu is next to another classic vampire, Dracula. And Nosferatu is actually a little bit taller than him. Nosferatu is actually a taller figure than I thought he'd be having him in hand. Here he is next to another NECA vampire figure, the Count from Rob Zombie's The Monsters. And finally, here he is next to the Wolfman. So overall, I would highly recommend picking this up because NECA did a phenomenal job on this. This is my favorite NECA figure of the year so far. I know there's definitely going to be more, but out of the NECA figures that I've bought and reviewed so far this year, this is hands down my favorite. He is an amazing figure, and I'm very happy to have him in my collection. This is definitely a must-have figure that you don't want to pass up. So, that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.